the world's second largest cocoa producer and Africa's second biggest gold miner. It will now add oil to its portfolio of exports, this as crude oil starts flowing from its offshore jubilee field this week. Ghana's government says that the income from oil production will double the country's gross domestic product growth to 12.3% in 2011. In addition, it hopes that this oil revenue will narrow the government's deficit from 9.7% to 7.5% of GDP next year. But some analysts say that these forecasts are perhaps slightly too optimistic. When you look at the typical projections, a lot of them have in fact been revised lower quite materially from, from you know, in terms, particularly in terms of GDP growth, what had originally been anticipated. I mean, if you look, for example, at the IMF data, which was published, you know, at last year and earlier this year, we were talking about GDP growth of something like 20% for next year. And they've revised that number down to 10%. And, and they're not alone. I've seen other e economists also bring their forecasts down to, to the vicinity of, of the 10% area, which is just below the government forecast. Ghana expects to produce around 120,000 barrels of oil a day in the first few months of operation. This could more than double to 250,000 barrels a day by 2013. Analysts say this will squeeze Ghana into the top 50 oil producers in the world. Despite the anticipated prosperity, Ghana's oil production also presents a list of risks. With many analysts concerned that the so-called blessing may turn into a resource curse while boosting and slowing the country's democratic progress. Former Ghanaian President John Kofur, who was head of state when oil was discovered, says it's his joy that he'll go down in history as the president under whose watch oil was found to turn the economy of Ghana around for the better. And he's outlined strict steps to avoid a resource curse. We do that by respecting contracts. We do that by putting in place good frameworks uh, for the exploitation of the resource. And uh, on the state side, um, how we, the state manages the revenues and resources uh, to the benefit of the people generally. But the World Bank, along with some other analysts, isn't too concerned about Ghana falling into the same trap as some other African oil producers like Nigeria. And a large part of this has to do with Ghana's already established export industries, namely agriculture and mining. In Ghana's case, you've got, you've got to see it in the context of the size of what we project oil exports to make up out of total exports. And for some time, we're still expecting gold and cocoa to be larger exports than, than what uh, oil will become. So I can't, see it be, I can't see a resource curse hitting Ghana in the near future unless they're able to ramp up their oil production well beyond the 250,000 barrels which they're projecting for for three years' time. Relative to other oil-producing countries like Nigeria, which pumps some 2 million barrels a day, Ghana is a small fish in a big oil pond. The $400 million of oil proceeds expected next year will account for only 6% of GDP. Still, that's nothing to be sneezed at. So whether Ghana will succeed where others have failed and ruin Kafua's dream, only time will tell.